Greetings, I am Legacy Moon, and this is True Crime and Mysteries. If you're a current subscriber, welcome back. If you are a potential subscriber, welcome. I received a comment under a video. The video was called Nesta Williams Girls Backpedaling and Pee Popping. And I thought that since it was such a, a thought provoking comment, I thought that I would go ahead and read it and get other people's opinions about it. Now, I responded to it, of course, but you know, everybody has their own point of view and their own opinion about things. So I just, I'm curious how, you know, anybody else would respond. Now, the comment is rather long, so please bear with me. And it reads as follows. Now, people are upset with Sonia and Sylvia claiming they shared accusers' photos. Well, Sonia and Sylvia cannot be sued, but certain other bloggers can. And here's why. First, if Oops. First, if this is too long to read, don't worry about it. Just skip to the next comment. Sonia and Sylvia talking about or looking up pictures of an alleged victim or victims is not illegal. It's also not witness tampering because no time did they try to contact the alleged victims for the purpose of persuading or threatening them to lie, change their story, or not testify. It's not even illegal if Sonia speaks about it with earnest because he already knows them anyway. They were all allegedly his side chicks. Let's say he didn't know who they were. It would still not be illegal for people to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with each other about anything. There is no law that prevents you or I from doing research or intel in someone's defense court case. That is why most prisons have law li libraries with books and computers. Sonia is 1,000% right when she says that phone calls from prison is responsible for any of the information revealed about the alleged victims because she could have blocked, redacted, hid, censored that vital information from her videos. So if anyone can get sued for alleged victims' names and or photos getting out, it would more than likely be phone calls from prison and other bloggers, but not Sonia or Sylvia. Yes, we know that the Freedom of Information Act allows for the release of the phone calls and the video visits. However, it is the responsibility of the media outlet to redact, censor, block any information that could potentially lead to alleged victim information to be released. So just like phone calls from prison redacted, hides, blocks, all of these words that YouTube doesn't like, such as S-A-R-D-V, etc., she could also have blocked any information, including the names of people involved, not to mention that we all know the blogger who initially exposed the name, photos, professions, and other social media pages and acting reels of Sonia and all of her family members. This could have put their lives in danger. So Sonia can sue her slash them, and the victims can sue phone calls from prison for neglecting to redact sensitive information from her videos before releasing them for the world to see. So I hate to tell you, but the people that you all should be mad about releasing information is not Sonia or Sylvia. Once again, the Information Act does not release 
anyone from the responsibility to redact info that could reveal witness or alleged victim identities. Also, the judges are likely aware these videos are out, so they could have reminded, warned the bloggers to redact all sensitive info. So, for instance, if your family friend goes to jail and you visit or call them, you can say anything you want to him or her. It is not illegal, but if a blogger releases your calls because of the Freedom of Information Act allows access, then number one, what number one, what you said is still not illegal because you were talking, you were taking to one person in con yeah, that was talking, I was right. You were talking in confidence, even on a jail call. And two, that blogger still has a duty to redact info to protect the alleged victims, period. Okay, so that was the comment that was left under that video. And by the way, if you're interested and you want to see it for yourself, it is pinned up under that video. And once again, it's the video that says Ernest uh, Williams girls or Nesta Williams girls backpedaling and pee popping. So anyway, here is my response. There is no such thing as a one-on-one -on -one privacy when you were talking to an inmate, period. Why was it necessary for Sylvia to research not only a victim, but her family? She put their information out. Why? Playing Inspector Gadget? What was the point? We don't know what Sylvia or Sonia is going to do with the victim's information. I mean, she is known for putting air tags on people's cars and tracking them, allegedly. We see the lengths she went, went to with R. Kelly case. She has already gone to Shirley Strawberry's beauty salon, and she knew that that was her salon. She tried to talk to or do an interview with Panay. She also went to Erica's house, what she thought was or what she thought was her house. Why all the inserting of oneself? Sylvia is supposed to be a content creator that speaks about matters dealing with the courts. Why has she, <clears throat> excuse me, inserted herself into the content? She has a conflict of interest. You can't have a Rule 22 for somebody's case, visit them on a regular basis in jail, talk to his side piece, and talk to his defense team. It's a conflict of interest, and it's unethical. She needs to pick a position, either be a court blogger or be an advocate. She is walking a very thin line. I wonder how the courts would feel about that. Phone calls from prison does not red does redact information. I'm sorry. She does what she can to protect sensitive information. Once again, there is no such thing as privacy when talking to an inmate. As far as the blogger that released Sonia's info, Facebook and Instagram are public domains. Sonia knows this. That's why she hid those apps or put them on private when all this began. You can't sue someone who uses information you put out on a public app. And I thank this person for their comment, and I hope they're subscribed. So you've heard the comment, and you've heard my response, and now I'd like your response. What do you think? Do you think phone calls from prison is putting victims in, in danger? Do you think the blogger, and we all know who that is, who exposed Sonia's information, do we think she was wrong? Do we think she's liable for uh, anything? And, uh, you know, what do you think about the field trip stalking Shirley, oh, excuse me, allegedly stalking Shirley Strawberry and, and going to Erica's house? What do, what do you think about those things? And lastly, my response, you know, I feel like there is no privacy when you are calling an inmate or visiting an inmate. As far as the information that was used by the blogger, 
who let uh, Sonia's information out. I mean, it, it was in a public domain, therefore able to view by the public. And um, yeah, and, and how do you feel about Sylvia having a Rule 22, being friendly with the defense's uh, t- uh, team, defense team, you know, going, doing visits. I mean, do you think all of this is a conflict of interest? I mean, I certainly do. And I wonder what the uh, prosecution and other judges would feel about this. You know, just some random thoughts. And I just thought I would share. I thank you very much for listening. And once again, I'm Legacy Moon. If you are not subscribed, hit that button. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up.